we're going to play was written by a sax player by the name of Sonny Rollins. Um, he's had a 70-year career. He made more than 60 albums. And uh, this was recorded in 1956, and I think it's probably one of his most famous, popular songs that he wrote. Uh, this is St. Thomas. Sorry, just a little minor adjustment. Uh, the next song that we'd like to play for you uh, is written about a guy who is kind of a ladies' man, uh, a womanizer, maybe? You know the type. Uh, smooth, suave, he likes to wine him, dine him, good time him, and then just say goodbye. So. He, he got a reputation, he, uh, you know, was, became known as Killer Joe, and because the ladies just couldn't take it, you know. Oh, Joe, please, don't kill me. <laughs> anyway, a lot of broken hearts. This song is about uh, Killer Joe, and it was written by a guy named Benny Golson.
This song was first recorded in 1945 and performed by his group, the Reboppers, which included uh, Miles Davis, a stick happy drummer named Max Roach, and uh, Dizzy Gillespie. And the name of this song is Now's the Time.
Okay, <clears throat> the, this next tune, uh, the title is, got some, there's two different stories. One is that the title of the song was, or the, the title originated from a guy who used to go hang out at bars <clears throat> where Michael Davis was playing, and he would sneak in, and the bartender would kind of ignore him with feeding drinks and let him sit there and listen for free. Hence the name Freddy Freeloader. He would come and freeload. Yeah. Uh, and then the other story is, I don't know how many of you might remember uh, Red Skelton, TV star, famous, funny, funny guy, um, especially his pantomime. Uh, so this, there's another story that this was actually written for or about Freddy Freeloader, the Red Skelton character, because they played this song, I think, on uh, one of his specials. So at any rate, the song is Freddy Freeloader and Miles Davis This song is kind of interesting. Um, it was written by a gentleman who was playing for play saxophone with Count Basie. And he used to comment all the time um, on Ella Fitzgerald's um, stocking that she wore. So he, 
he wrote his, he wrote a tune and um, and she wrote the lyrics. And uh, after we finished the song, I guess they rolled into town one night uh, that they were going to play the next day and they had a rehearsal. So they uh, popped the song out and started playing it. And everybody hated it. It sounded like noise and it was terrible. And, but they kept playing through it. And by the end of the session, it was great. And it turned out to be um, his best known song. And Count Basie told him that you know, basically he hit it out of the park with this one. So, with all that said, this is um, Shiny Stocking. Shining stuff. 
for those of you who are late, I'm Jay. This is the lovely Kitty. And we are TWA. We are what? TWA. Like, like the airlines. I know. But our meaning is uh, together we are alive. Yeah, yeah. But with you, together we're all alive. Uh, this next song was written by a Frenchman by the name of Jacques Pepin. Uh, the lyrics were written by Jacques. The music itself was written by Joseph Cosma, and he's also French. And then the, uh, the English lyrics were written by Johnny Mercer. And uh, <coughs> the original song was based on a poem, which uh, the title of which was Le Fouille Mort Mortes, or literally Dead Leaf. Dead Leaf. Dead Leaf. So, um, yeah, it's a sad song, you know, it's about love and loss. But we Americans, right? We gotta happy everything up. So, um, Johnny wrote some less dark lyrics for it, and, um, and the jazz community embraced it and made it an instrumental as well, so uh, here it is Autumn Leaves. Song to uh, 
express how it feels to be happy, or to how, how it feels to feel the feeling of being happy, if that makes sense. So anyway, this is um, Kitty's favorite love song also, by the way. And the title is La Vida and the Rose.
Thank you. also popularized by uh, Cannonball Adderley uh, as an instrumental. Well, this features Kitty, and uh, this is Star Spell on Alabama.
So this next tune was written in 1959 and 1960 uh, by a gentleman who was a pretty well regarded uh, jazz musician in South America by the name of Antonio Carlos Jobim, also known as Tom. Anyway, uh, this is a lovely, beautiful song, very melodic. Uh, he's referring, the song was written about a farm that he used to visit as a kid with his cousins, um, and the name of the farm was Dindiri. So the name of the song is Dindi. And, uh, you know, I have an uncle with a farm. I used to go visit when I was a kid. If I wrote a song about his farm, it would sound like this. They lived in the flattest part of Utah, and he grew corn. And so, my song would be sunrise, sunset. That's how interesting my uncle's farm was. Anyway, this is a much better tune. Uh, hope you enjoy the candy.
modern time. And uh, for the longest time, it, this was written in 1936. For the longest time, it was just a melody. But in 1954, uh, John Turner and Jeffrey Parsons got together and put some lyrics to it. And uh, they were going to have Kitty sing Smile for us. Sing with me if you know how to sing.
Thanks, everybody. I hope you're uh, still having a pleasant time. Uh, it should. There's some music that doesn't make me very happy. What? What? No, we don't play. Oh, some of that. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's not music. Yeah, New York. <laughs> okay, this is our half number already? Yes. Wow, we're already doing the set. This was written in 1941, 1942. Uh, maybe. By Duke Ellington's clarinet player by the name of Barney Bigger. But Duke takes credit for the song, and in fact, he put out a 1942 short film featuring this song um, with him at the piano and his bass player. That's how it starts, and then as the song progresses, other band members wander in and start playing and jamming along. Um, and maybe that's how the song got its name. Didn't have a name before that, but after that, it's called C Jam Blues. From Duke Ellis. Famous saxophone player Paul Desmond, um, kind of an understated guy. I, I love his style. He's very um, always composed and just very technical. Um, great sax player. Anyway, written by Paul Desmond in 1964. This is called Samba Canteen. <coughs> Thank you. 
want us to stop? Want us to quit? Keep going? Okay, we got we got two more and that's it. We have a moment prepared. This next uh, song is a was featured as a principal theme in a 1959 Portuguese language film called Orfeu de Gro Manga de Caribal, which uh, loosely translated and shortened as Carnival Morning. Carnival Morning. So it, it's uh, written in Portuguese.
Thank you, everybody. Okay. This is really the last song. Um, it was written in 1937 by a Frenchman by the name of Jean Claude Reinhardt and Stefan Rapelli. Uh, it's a gypsy jazz. And uh, this, this became a gypsy jazz standard. And his signature piece, this is the one song that this composer uh, is known for. And it's entitled Minor Swing. We hope you enjoy it.